from plagues of locust swarms straight out of the Old Testament of the Bible to predacious katydids in their punk era, this is the Order Orthoptera. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. So today we're talking about the Order Orthoptera, which includes the grasshoppers, the crickets, and the katydids. Oh, and of course, the camel crickets, and the Jerusalem crickets, and the wettas, and more. Many of them look horrifying, but they're not that bad, I promise. Now you might be wondering what all these crazy critters have in common, so let's break it down. Well, one you might be able to guess. Nearly all Orthoptera have these elongated hind legs, which helps them with their trademark behavior, jumping. We call legs that are modified for jumping saltatorial legs. They also have tegmina. These are slightly thickened forewings that have a bit of a leathery texture. Other orders such as mantises and cockroaches also have tegmina. Overall, orthopterans tend to have elongated bodies that are almost cylindrical and they all have chewing mouth parts. Katydids, crickets, and grasshoppers are our main orthopteran groups, so let's talk about how to tell them apart. Right off the bat, grasshoppers are gonna have shorter and thicker antennae, while katydids and crickets are going to have longer and thinner antennae. As for crickets versus katydids, cricket hind legs are flared out, while katydid hind legs are more in line with the body. Keep practicing and it'll feel like second nature soon enough. Sometimes you'll see a needle-like protrusion from the abdomens of katydids or crickets, and this is their ovipositor, which they use to lay eggs deep into the soil or into plant stems, hence its length. Now if you see one of these on a cricket or katydid, you know it's a female. Speaking of laying eggs, Orthopterans are hemimetabolous, which if you remember from some of our other videos, means they have a three-stage metamorphosis, from egg, to nymph, to adult. The nymphs are pretty recognizable, because they look similar to the adults, just smaller and they lack wings. Remember though, some groups lack wings even as adults. So keep that in mind before you go confidently declaring an orthopteran as a nymph. Nymphs and adults tend to feed on the same things. However, diet can vary greatly across different groups of orthopterans. Some eat foliage, like grasshoppers and most katydids. Others are detritivores, eating rotting plants or animal material, such as many crickets. Mole crickets are a group of burrowing orthopterans that often feed on the roots of plants. And then these little monsters are predatory katydids, which are voracious hunters. They bite hard, but dang are they cool. Wettas are also one of my personal favorites. Since New Zealand lacks native rodents, wettas evolved to fill almost the same niche, scavenging around for food on the island. And they grow to the same size as many of these rodents too. So Orthoptera is kind of all over the map. And with this wide variety of feeding niches, of course some are bound to come in conflict with humans. Perhaps the most famous is the issue of locusts. Locusts are a subgroup of grasshoppers. Basically any grasshopper that switches into a swarming phase is referred to as a locust. These grasshoppers will switch into their swarming phase when food is scarce and populations are high so they can travel in mass to new food resources. They are unrelenting and can defoliate entire fields of crops. In particularly bad years, locusts can cause billions of dollars worth of damage. That's billions, with a B. You know a pest is a problem when we've been struggling with it for thousands of years. Mole crickets can also be a pest of golf courses because of their burrowing sometimes. Uh, but I think the whole locust swarm thing kind of overshadows this. But don't write them off just yet. We still like our orthopterans. Orthopterans are a critical link in our food webs through a multitude of different niches. As we discussed, crickets and their relatives can be great detritivores, helping to recycle nutrients back into the environment. And the herbivores play an important role in nutrient cycling as well taking a ton of plant energy and turning it into easy to digest protein packs. They're like little bison. Birds, rodents, and even humans caught on to this a long time ago. 
Now you can even get cricket protein powder if you so desire. Grasshoppers are believed to make up 30 to 90% of grassland birds' diets. So how do we conserve these cattle of the insect world? You might be tired of me saying it, but planting native is a great place to start. Some native grasses, herbs, and shrubs can go a long way. Mowing less can also be a huge help. Let some areas of your property overgrow a little bit. Maybe let some wild grasses get in there and grow a little bit taller than you're used to. No Mow May is a cute little tradition that a lot of people do as well, where they won't mow their lawns for all of May. This is because spring is a very critical time for many groups of insects, including grasshoppers and bees. Outdoor composting and preservation of leaf litter can help the orthopter and detritivores find a nice little home as well. Catching grasshoppers when I was a kid are some of my earliest memories with insects, and I hope that future generations can have that same opportunity. Thank you all so much for listening, and remember to subscribe to keep up with future orders. Peace.